Okay, uh, yeah, welcome back. Now in this last uh, video I would like to show you what you can actually do with your data, right? In the, the uh, previous videos I've shown you how to import data into PIFLAB or record it directly in PIFLAB, how to process it, how to post-process it, um, and how to filter it. And now, yeah, I would like to show you what you can actually do with the data. So I have loaded the data from the last video and we have some results for every frame. Um, we have already um, calculated the mean flow velocity um, and that can be done. I will quickly show you again. If you go to plot temporal derived parameters and then you would click calculate mean. You can also enter numbers here so you don't calculate the mean over the whole session but only over portions of it, whatever you want. Now let's go to the spatially derived parameters again. Um, here is a list with all the parameters that you, ca that you can calculate directly in PIFLAB. For example, vorticity. Let's go to a frame. Like, uh, actually, we should smooth the data here. Let's tie a little bit. And then we calculate vorticity. It looks like this. We can calculate the U component. It looks like this. V component. And so on. Um, the Colors actually are of course proportional to the magnitude of the parameter that you are plotting, but in order to see what they actually mean, you go to modify plot appearance and you can enable a color bar. Then the color bar will be plotted here and yeah, you actually know what the colors mean. You can also change the colors um, of the color meter of course, like this is the more classical one, but I don't like it. I like the new MATLAB standard Parula color map. Um, yeah, you can scale the vectors. You can sort of actually uh, hide the vectors if you don't want to show them. You can make the mask 100% um, um, transparent. Then the mask will not be shown anymore. Um, let's do it back to 50. Yeah, you can also, of course, adjust the vector scale, the vector width, and you can also reduce the amount of vectors that are plotted. So you can only plot every second vector if there are too many vectors. Um, yeah, that's about it, what you can do here. We were in the spatially derived parameters. Now, if you want to keep this color map constant from one frame to the other, then you can disable the automatic color map scaling and you can number it yourself. Let's say we want to have it from 0.25 minus 0.25 to plus 0.25. This should be color map range and we apply it and that sort of changes our color map. We can also subtract mean flow velocities. For example here, um, we can subtract the mean U component, which doesn't really make sense in this experiment, but we can do it anyway. You can also plot streamlines. If you need them, you can draw a streamline rake like this and then the streamlines will be added. And if you want to get rid of them, you delete them, of course. What you can also do is that you extract data, for example, along a polyline. So this is done like this. You select polyline here and then you draw your line. Let's say we draw a line from the top to the bottom. We want to have a cross section here and we want to plot. Let's select the U component along this line. Um, then we will click plot data and it's not surprising that the U component in the center of the line is highest and it's positive because it's to the right and we defined in calibration that the x-axis should go from left to right. Okay, you can of course, yeah, you can plot all sorts of stuff. You can also plot, uh, you can draw a circle and then plot data along that circle Sometimes that is handy if you're sort of calculating the circulation of vortices, then this can help. Okay, and you can also save the result as a text file. Um, and you can also, if you enable this checkbox, you can sort of extract data along the path for all your images in your current session. You can also extract data from an area. Let's, for example, select the area mean value. We want to know the mean velocity magnitude in an area that I will draw now. In this area, I want to know the mean value and it is plotted on the screen. And I can again save this and do this 
for all frames in my current session. So uh, yeah, I have sort of a time resolve representation of the average flow velocity in one area. Sometimes that is needed. These are the um, main data extraction functionalities in PIVLAB. Now I want to quickly show you that you can of course also export your data. You can export data as an image. Uh, if you select bitmap uh, or JPEG, you can also select uh, export it as an animation. Um, you can export data as a text file. I wouldn't really recommend it unless you need to process the data in another tool. But yeah, writing data to ASCII files doesn't really make sense because we're in MATLAB. We can export data as MAT file. Um, for example, here, you can export only one frame, the one that we're currently seeing, or you can export data for all frames that will all be saved to one single MAT file that you can process in MATLAB later on. Um, you can also export everything as a techplot file. If you're working with techplot, um, you can export it as a parview binary a VTK file. So we can sort of process your data in Parview, which is a very powerful post-processing tool also. And you can also export your data to the MATLAB workspace if you click um, File, Export, oops, or Results in MATLAB workspace. And then if you go to your MATLAB environment, you will see all the variables appearing here in this list. And um, now this brings me to the end of my last short video about PIFLAB data export and data exploration. Um, I hope that you have fun analyzing your data in PIFLAB and if you run into problems there's an official PIFLAB forum where I, if I have time, sometimes this is the case, I will answer your questions and also assist you sometimes with your analysis. Okay, thank you very much for watching and bye bye.